Okay, the newest stuff, intermediate coding with CSS. So this is where we're going to actually be able to, on our web pages that we've been working on, uh, on the different HTML and CSS stuff, we're going to be able to change font stuff now, which is a huge leap. So the last things we did were links, and we did tables, and now we get to play with fonts. So I have the challenges listed here. It will be three challenges. Fancy font families, great big font sizes, and famous font formats, and the videos that are in between. So we'll watch the videos first, and then we'll go into the challenges. So if we go over to Khan Academy, the very first video is this right here. And let us watch the two inter introduction videos. get laid out on the page in a different order and this one makes it really different so now it looks like this cityscape with this title that comes down here and this credits over here and oh man, things are animating and all of this is just CSS maybe it's not CSS that you know yet but if you keep going all of this will be available at your fingertips if you put in enough work you'll be able to make beautiful websites You've seen how to change the color, background color, of the text on your page, but there's so much more that you can do with text and CSS. To start off, let's change the font. What's a font? You probably already know what one is, but you may not know the word for it. It's the style of the letters that make up the words, like whether the letters have flourishes on them, or how thick they are, or they look like they are written with an ink pen. Here, it'll be easier if I just go ahead and change the font family on this web page. I'll go to our PCSS rule that selects all the paragraphs and add a font family property here. Font family serif. Do you see how the letters changed? Notice they look a bit simpler now. Okay, now let me change the font family back by serif instead. Notice the letters look a bit more complex. A serif font is any font that has what looks like little feet on the letters. When we tell the browser to use a serif font family, it will use the default serif font for the computer, which is usually the Times New Roman font. I'm not a big fan of that font though, so I'm going to change it back again to sans serif. The sans comes from Latin and means without, so a sans serif font is one that doesn't have those little feet on the letters. That's why the letters look simpler. When we tell the browser to use a sans serif font family, it uses the default sans serif for that computer, which is usually Arial or Helvetica. But here's an important point. It'll pick the default font of whatever computer the viewer is on, not the author. So we may very well be seeing two different sans serif fonts right now if your computer has a different default than mine. Sometimes I'm okay with that, but other times I'm picky, and I really want to make sure that whoever's viewing my webpage sees it in exactly the same fonts as me. In that case, I can specify the precise font name, like Helvetica. This will work as long as both in you and me have Helvetica on our computers. But not all computers have the same fonts, and in that case, the computer will just ignore the property entirely. Luckily, CSS lets us specify a fallback font family, a backup, in case a particular font doesn't exist on a computer. 
We just add a comma after Helvetica and then bring back sans serif there. Now the computer will look for Helvetica and if it can't find it, just use its default sans serif font. Generally, whenever you specify a specific font name like Helvetica, you should always specify a backup family name as well. Besides serif and sans serif, there are a couple other generic font family names we can use. If we wanted our lyrics to look more handwritten, we could specify font family cursive. Nice. Or if we wanted the lyrics to be a bit fancier, we could try the fantasy font family. Or what if we wanted them to look like they were written on a typewriter? We could specify the monospace font family. A monospace font is fixed width meaning that all of the letters take up the exact same width. And in fact, you've seen a lot of monospace fonts here on Khan Academy because we always use monospace fonts for code editors. That's because we want all of our code to line up, regardless of the letters in the words. Okay, now that you know how to change the font family, use your power wisely. If you want your page to look good, limit yourself to a few different families and come up with pairs of fonts that look good together. But hey, if you don't want your page to look good, then the world is your ugly oyster. Go forth and fontify. All right, so that video was basically a um, review for us because we knew about serif and sans serif because when we did typology, we learned about all that stuff and fonts and that sort of thing. So this is actually an extension of things we already know, which is great. We're gonna go to our challenge. I'm just gonna kind of copy right here so that we know what the command is. Um, for our fonts and we'll go to the challenge for fancy font families and right up here it tells us what our challenge is so we're changing the font families for the different um, song lyrics so the web page displays the theme songs from a few famous TV families each of the lyrics paragraphs have IDs but the CSS rules for them have no properties yet so add a font family property to each of the CSS rules using a generic family name that works for all computers. So we're not gonna be using a specific font like Helvetica or Arial. We're gonna use generic, which would be sans serif, which means no feet. Serif, which is those fonts that have like the little feet. Uh, they're saying that fancy and monospace and cursive are acceptable as well. So what we have is the Flintstones and um, do we, let's see, I forget. If we have that and we put it inside the curly brackets, yes, we're going to put in font family like that. So we'll go over here to Flintstones. We can paste our fonts. We will take Helvetica out of there though and just put sans serif. And that would change the Flintstones one, I believe. So. Now what we can do is, get me out of the way here, I can copy and paste over here, and maybe instead of, oops, oh, that's not what I wanted, let's take this out of here again, and we're going to change sans serif to serif, and it does change our font to serif, so that is fonts with feet. And on the Adams song, let's change it to, and I'll type this one in since we know what we're doing now. Font family colon, and let's go with fantasy, like so. And we're good to go. Now we have three different fonts for the three different songs, the Flintstones, the Jetsons, and the Adams family. So now we can click next, next step. And it is saying, remember how to use element selectors from CSS Basics? Use the body selector to make a new CSS rule that changes the font family of the entire page. Okay. So in order to change that, uh, what we've done is we put in our body command within our style section. So style means CSS and the command is body, and again we're doing font family, and in this case I chose monospace. And so all of the fonts for everything in the body of the website will be monospace now. So 
our character says we figured it out and he's happy so now we will finish the challenge and we'll do our spin-off we'll put our name over here and be able to save it so as always I'll just show you how we're saving this we do the share button here triple click control C to copy go to the assignment on Google Classroom. I'm going to go to the student side so I can see it. And it is right here, Intermediate Coding CSS Part 1. The challenge I've just done is Fancy Font Families. I'm going to add that link and move on to the next two challenges. So I am one third of the way there. That's this tutorial for the first challenge. I will now create the second tutorial for the second challenge and so on. See you back in class.